welcome to the train. Uh, today I'm offering the empowerment of the Buddha Shakyamuni. Muni, uh, before to go read this empowerment, in the part of the ceremony, ceremony or the empowerment itself, to give introductions of this empowerment the teachings. Introduction is first is the, the Buddha. And of course we all know Buddha Shakyamuni quite well, since we are practicing and following the teaching of the Buddha Shakyamuni. Muni, but however, is part of the lineage teaching, instructions, so I'm going to give brief introductions of the Buddha Shakyamuni. And after that, then, the first the Buddha, second, the lineage, how this teaching came to now, until now. And the third is the meaning of the empowerment. This is not just the ceremony, but this is the sacred ceremony of the Vedayana teaching. Connected. So therefore, again, what this means, ceremonial empowerment. So this three category, from this three category, will introduce and that will make the meaning and the importance of this whole ceremony and the empowerment. And first, I will talk about the Buddha. And the Buddha, as you, we all know, is total enlightened beings who came about 2,600 years ago, ago in this world. But however, again, how Buddha came in this world? And there is a three accounts according to Buddhism. The Hinayana account, or the basic Buddhism account, how Buddha came in this world. And there is general Mahayana, and as well as also Theravada. Vada account, and the Vajrayana account, how Buddha came. These are not just the, not just the, somebody is interpreting how Buddha came in this world, but Buddha Shakyamuni himself spoke in the teachings, in the basic Buddha's teaching, his teachings are the Hinayana or the Vinay teachings, and the Sutra teachings, and the Vajrayana teachings. So in that light of his words, of the wisdom, the omniscience world, and we follow as in the old the great master followed that. The first I will talk really about the how the general basic Buddhist <coughs> schools Buddha appeared in this book. First, Buddha Shakyamuni himself said that he was only beings as like many of us. That means we are heavily obscured with the emotions. Emotions <coughs> and the struggling in the samsara <coughs> as many of us in the ups and the downs all that swinging emotions and all of that. But however, everyone, again Buddha said, every living being inherited such a unique, beautiful nature. Nature, the nature that Buddha named as Buddha nature. That Buddha nature is every living being has that nature. No one is out of that nature. Since we have this beautiful nature, therefore if we walk for that nature to grow, to glorify that nature, we all will become, Buddha Shakyamuni said, become the Buddha as himself. He was the role model, example. He was the hope to every living being, and the vision, the destination, goal to achieve that realization. That was the, he said. So in that case, in the Buddha's teaching said, once upon a time, long time ago, he was king, king, and his name was Odin in a Tibetan war. Odin, he was king, and he has beautiful elephant, white elephant, white elephant that he loved so much. And he asked to the elephant trainers to please train this elephant. And of course, trainer accepted very graciously. He trained that elephant perfectly and become so gentle and peaceful. And one day, the Buddha, the, the, who was Buddha, that time came. King Odin told to his trainers, let's take our elephant, go to the, explore the world, explore the wood, sorry, not wood, wood or jungle. Let's go to the jungles, wood. And he said, yes, great king, I will be prepared. Prepared whenever you are. So, as he prepared, they both ride the, this white, beautiful, trained elephant and walking in the jungles. 
Suddenly, in the teaching, said, elephant started running. The trainer trying to stop the elephant, couldn't stop. And he walked in the radio faster and faster. And then trainer said, a great king, hold the branch. Branch, this elephant cannot be stopped. Hold the branch. So they start holding the branch and let elephant go. And then they both descended on the ground from the branch. And king said, what is this? I asked you to train the elephant, but looks like you didn't train it. Why is this? He said. He said, oh, great king, I'm the only trainer of the body, but not the mind. What that means, king said. Because I trained the body so well, but mind, because this elephant is in the meeting season. Meeting season, he smells the smell of the wild female elephant, therefore he's running. Then King said, How you will how I can prove that? He said, King, you will I will prove that. After one week, about one week, this elephant will return to the kingdom. Actually. He said, okay, I will watch. <laughs> and exactly the same time, around that time, elephant very gently, humbly returned to the kingdom. He thought, wow, that's really true. And that's now. He, he trained the body, but he trained, he couldn't train the mind. Then this king, king Odin said, who is trainer of the mind? He said, I'm not trainer of the mind, but trainer of the mind is known as Buddha. That time, there is Buddha. Buddha. And the moment he heard, the king, king Odin heard the Buddha, he immediately, he, his body become, what's called, goosebumps. Goosebumps came up, and it's a so kind of inspired the hearing of the name of the Buddha. Then he contacted Buddha. He thought, I'm going to train my mind, he decided. That is the beginning of his journey according to Theravada or the Vinaya teachings. I shouldn't say maybe Theravada, but basic Buddhism says that is the beginning of the Buddha. In the teaching says there is Nurva Long. So the one of the second of the Vinaya teaching, and he said, I I understand Buddha is free from the negative emotions, seeing the wild elephant's mind, and seeing the difficulties of the sentient beings. Therefore, I'm going to develop the bodhicitta. I'm going to train myself, my mind. Ever since then, he began to walk, continue to keep that his courage and commitment and inspiration, what he started, kept life up life, then he became the Buddha. That is as like the Vinaya accounts. Then in the Mahayana, in the general Buddhism account, Buddha is, I'm sure you heard this story. But once upon a time, Buddha was born in the hell realms, and they both with a friend, they're trying to fool the chariot, chariot in hell realms, and the friend was so weak, couldn't pull. But even the he is so weak, the trainer or the, the what's called that one who who <laughs> one who who is uh, on the behind the chariot, what's called that name? The driver. 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 Okay. Driver. Driver. And his uh, agent, agent of the hell realm, of the driver, got so upset to that person, one who cannot keep up as the other person, as the, who was Buddha, keep, keep up, and he beat him. The agent, the driver, beat him. That. Seeing that, Buddha thought, how we can beat him? Beat him. He's so weak, he cannot pull. It's not something that is not pulling, but he's so weak, cannot pull the chariot. Therefore, I wish I can pull for, both, for him too. He started making more effort to pull him. And that moment, then Buddha in the teaching said, his vision is changed completely. And that is the beginning of his, the aspiration of wishing bodhicitta. And when he developed that wishing bodhicitta, and after that, he met again another great Buddha, known as the same name as Buddha Shakyamuni himself. This time, Buddha was named also Buddha Shakyamuni. That he 
able to meet this with Buddha Shakyamuni and he developed the actualizing bodhicitta. So wishing bodhicitta, actualizing bodhicitta combined together, then he continued again, keep the same commit, courage and the confidence of the bodhicitta and practicing the six paramatas or the ten paramatas. I will list the ten paramatas, of course you all know that, basically most of you. And the first is generosity paramatas. Second is the morality paramatas. Third is the passion for transcendental practices. Fourth is the joyful effort for transcendental practices. And the fifth is the concentration for transcendental practices. And the fifth is the wisdom transcendental practices. Seventh is the skill between transcendental practices. And eighth is the ability transcendental practices. And ninth is aspiration or inspiration transcendental practices. And the tenth is known as the primordial wisdom transcendental practices. So he completed all six, six or the ten transcendental practices in, within the period of the three countless eons in the teaching set. He continued the work. He kept the commitment, the courage, and confidence. Exactly the same thing with the, with the work of the bodhicitta. That means the six or six or ten paramatha is the tools and means to activating growth and the deepening of the bodhicitta practices. And bodhicitta, of course, you all know, is loving kindness, is compassion, is wisdom combined together. That thinking of all the sentient beings, how to give them joy, peace, happiness, and remove the suffering and the difficulties and fulfill their all wishes. That is the bodhicitta with that intention kept strong in the core of Buddha's heart or the, the bodhisattva's heart. He walked tirelessly with joyfully, not just the boring and the tiring, but the joyfully, he courageously, joyfully, he walked for that uh, bodhicitta and through the ten paramatas and for three countless eons. And that after that are completing the three countless eons, and then Buddha reached enlightenment in the Buddha Gaya. Gaya, and uh, according to the lunar calendar, it was yesterday, Buddha reached enlightenment. That is the how general Buddhism approaches. And then in the Vajrayana, or the Vajrayana approach, Buddha is already enlightened state, long before he reached enlightenment in the Buddha Gaya. Buddha Gaya reaching enlightenment is mainly display, because Buddha reached enlightenment long before as a Dharma Gaya. Achieving the realization of Dharmakaya, that he went through that, then he emanated the two emanation bodies, known as the Rupakayas, or known as the Sambhokaya and the Nirmakayas. That Nirmakaya, Sambhokaya, which is resided in the pure land of the Omi Tupoku, Akanishita known as the Omi Tupoku, still he is living, residing Buddhas. Buddha. From that Sambhokaya Buddha, reflect his emanation to this world, as known as the Buddha Shakyamuni. That the as like moon is shining so perfectly beautiful, clearly in the sky, wherever there is the circumstances and the conditions of, to reflect the moon, will reflect it to that pond or that place. Similarly, Buddha Sambhokaya is residing in the Tukkokopa pure land, Akanishita. From that, through the compassion and loving kindness, and emanated Namakaya form as Buddha Shakyamuni in this world. As Buddha was born and reached enlightenment, all those he showed the display to inspire, to encourage it follow like us, that we all have hope and vision, we can get enlightenment. To show that once again, again he showed all those 12 activities, and then when everything is completed, he merged back to that source where he emanated the Sambhokaya status. So that is the way generally, of course there is again in Vajrayana many different Vajrayana levels of the Vajrayana teaching, but this is the one of the levels of general Vajrayana teachings. So he is living Buddha right now. So that is really about the Buddha. But now what is again? Buddha is full of love and compassion. What is Buddha? Buddha is free from all the negativities all the negative emotions and ego clean, self-important, and greed, and nothing but true love, true compassion. And the compassion and love 
that don't have any borders. Love all the living beings. In the teaching, and of course, it's renowned. Buddha is friend to every living being. It don't have to be introduced. It's friend to all the sentient beings. His love and compassion to all the sentient beings. Not just the Buddha Shakyamuni, actually in the teaching said, when you reach the Buddha, that means there's no boundaries of the egos, no like kind of blockage of the egos, no self-importance, no negative emotions. Therefore, you become the friend to everyone. And your love and kindness and compassion is emanating to every direction without a blockage. Blockage without any discriminations. Shining that to everyone. That is the, what the Buddha is. And that is the, what we like to be achieved, like to become the universal friend, universal role model of love and kindness and compassion, not just now, but continually for all the living beings until everyone becomes the Buddha. That is the long last goal and vision, what the Buddha said. So that is the, what Buddha Shakyamuni is. Yes, Buddha Shakyamuni, when you, we read life's story of Buddha Shakyamuni, how Buddha was humble, how humble he is and how simple he was, how courage he was, how commitment he was, and how wise he was, how he kept everything so perfectly beautiful, and share everything, everyone is welcomed under his teachings. No one is discriminated, and no one is like high and low. Everyone is equal in the reality level, but what Buddha said, there is no difference at all. And we walked for our enlightenment, we walked for our nations, Truly, we all have the same opportunity, same goal, same achievement that Buddha Shakyamuni himself did. All in Gaurapyam Masamba, what Tara did. Exactly the same thing. That was the, what the Buddha is. So therefore, today we connect to these great teachers. Great teacher, the teacher to all the beings. This is again one of the very, very special and beautiful. Beautiful. And that is really about the Buddha Shakyamuni's, Buddha Shakyamuni's. And then this teaching, how this, this lineage comes from, obviously they start from Buddha Shakyamuni's. Buddha Shakyamuni's, this, this is connected more to the Vajrayana teachings. Buddha is of course the master of the old Nayana schools. This teaching is connected to the Vajrayana teachings. Again, how where this teaching comes from? This is connected to the according to schools of Tibetan Buddhism, is connected to the Anuyova Tantra, three Anatantra, three Anatantra, Mahayova, Anuyova, and Adi, Akiyova Tantra. This is connected to the within the Anuyova teaching, teaching, teachings. And this, so therefore, this is then continued from the Buddha to the old way to those great masters to the Tibet. And then in this again in the Tibet, there is all is known as uh, every almost in Tibet in the Buddhist countries, and there is four major schools. And among those four schools, and this lineage belongs with the Nyingma schools of the Tibetan Buddhism, as I think many of you all know. And the Nyingma schools of Tibetan Buddhism is then started with the great master Guru Pema Sambhava, Kenchasam Deti, a great master again. Actually, Shantarakshas from these great masters and they continually teaching until now. And the way the teaching is transmitted, they preserved, they kept integrity, it's the qualities in the Nyingma schools, those are known as the Kama lineage and the Tenma lineage, two major lineage systems that through that preserve the teaching, it is integrity qualities. Exactly as the Buddha spoke, exactly as Gurupa and Masamba taught, and nothing deluded that have the integrity, call it authenticness, that lineage teaching. And that is the, what the lineage is. It's not something started very recently, newly that. It's not something that, not deluded by the conceptions and the thoughts and the egos, and that might be, it's not experimental lineage teaching. It's the teaching of the wisdom teaching, lineage teaching, lineage of compassion that walk so many living beings to bring the enlightenment, to realization of their final goal. That lineage teaching that we are connecting, that lineage is continuing that the teachings. And this teaching then again continued to the great master, such as Master Maharamuchis. Maharamuchis was one of the great masters and one of the great teachers in the Buddhist 
his story or the Tibetan Buddhist history. He was great Tetung, visionary, scholar, master, thinker, and siddhas, and great practitioners. Practitioners, and then again he gave these teachings. As he gave these teachings, and then he combined that with as Anu Yoga teachings, and I, I received this lineage teaching from, from many, many great teachers, but particularly from Kenji Padishar Rinpoche, that many of us know that. He gave these teachings so many times, this is one of his dearest practices, pr pr practices of teachings, and from that teaching as I received, I'm offering to you that. And this is not just, a, I'm offering, maybe you received this teaching before, but this is one of our dear practices. We practice every our centers practice. This Buddha's practice become the principal practices of our lineage, in our Sangha members, according to the direction of the Kenji Padi Sharanamboji. We connect it to the great master teacher, the source of the, all the teachings of the Buddhism. That is so special, so important. In the teaching say, everything of the Buddha Shakyamuni with the gold in his color and love and kindness complete. It is teaching said, I'm a great master of the said, it brings calm, soothing, and peaceful, and gentle. It will become more ourself, more ourself. We see the value and importance of ourself. And we see the also value and importance of others existing. Therefore, respect and appreciation comes so natural, beautiful. That's what the, really the Buddha is. And then we are connected to the teaching. And then also in the teachings, by practice of the Buddha Shakyamuni, it will increase, increasing our moralities. It will become stable of the concentrations. It will bring increase our wisdom, understanding. These are the three principles, the essential practice of all Buddhisms, no matter Hinayana, no matter Mahayana, no matter Vajrayana, these three are the principal practice of the old Buddhisms, and that means morality, concentration, and wisdom. Those are known as three training practices, three practices. Those are the meaning of the, all the teachings. Every teaching of the Nayana, or the three Bhaskara teachings, the Vinaya, Sutra, and Abhidharma teaching, what that teaching tells? That teaching tells the morality, that teaching tells the concentration, that teaching tells the wisdom teachings. That is the what is. We need the morality, we need the concentration, we need the wisdoms. And we combine that three together, we will be the enlightened beings, truly enlightened beings, as Buddha. So practicing Buddha Shakyamuni in the teachings, it will increasing and the deepening of the three training practices. Morality, concentration, and wisdom. In the Tibetan teaching often said, Sutam, Tengenzi, and Shira. This is so important. This is not just important, that is practices. The whole practices, that. These three training practices deals directly to our body, or directly our speech, directly to our mind. It takes care of everything in the brain. In the larger view, it deals the form, sound, and spaces. Everything. So there's nothing is missing out of these three, three training practices. By practice of Buddha Shakyamuni, it will bring the deeper and strong and growth understanding of these three trainings, always said in teaching. So that is basically about the, really about the lineage of how this started, that teaching. And